check out Big Broski. Saturday morning got a lot of work to do um, got a car full of tools and parts and a bunch of other random things I got <laughs> wheels vacuum cleaner all this kind of shit what's the Nissan dealership this morning a um, bunch of parts came in from Japan so I got a got a bag full of those um, yeah we're just gonna start going through it and tackle a lot of stuff on the car today Check out this light that I got. Holy shit. Thing is so freaking bright. So this will really help in the shop because uh, it's pretty pretty dimly lit in here. So being able to see what's going on in the interior, now I can now I can really get in there and and, and see without having to scrounge for uh, for bolts on the floor that I can't tell what they are. Also had a bit of a parts haul today from Nissan. Um picked up a ton of random clicks uh, from Motorline Nissan in Oxford. This train, drain washer, this crush washer came from Japan and that was a, <laughs> I believe that was a, a 10 day old. It was a bumper bracket that's missing on my car. Jackass that owned the car before just, just lost it. Don't know what he did. Is there anything else in here? Should uh what are these guys here? I have no fucking clue what this is. Spacer, oh the bumper spacers. I can't believe I paid for these. <laughs> That's awesome. Um Yeah, so just a lot of shit. A lot of shit. So let me start going through this and I'm gonna reassemble the front end as well. Alright, so the first project for today is going to be sanding this guy down, uh degreasing it cleaning it off and then respraying it nice uh, satin black so I can reinstall the AC fan basically on the front of the car because now I have all the bits to be able to reinstall complete the whole front end including the lights and everything in the grill so I think this is going to be something we definitely tackle today because it's, it's a good thing we can check off on the car. All right, tackle first. Um, I took out the, uh, the center support for the um, hood latch. So I got all that. I'm gonna scotch bright this and uh, prime and uh, spray paint it. And then out here, I got the intercooler. So I put, we had wire brushed the intercooler a couple weeks ago, me and my buddy. And um, it got most of the paint off, but obviously we were really worried about nicking the pins, which does happen when you have a, uh, a rotary wire brush very close to you know a piece of aluminum that's like 0.3 of a mil thick ridiculous so I sprayed um, paint stripper on it today then I degreased it washed it now I'm letting it dry and then um, I'm going to paint it uh, today as well before we stick it all back on and here I put down my first coat of um, a satin black paint I already primed this did a couple coats of primer this is the AC fan shroud it also goes on the front end so uh, I did a number on it wire brushing and and getting it uh, getting a lot of the surface rust off and then most of the paint it seemed so now just you know just trying to make it look pretty it's obviously not a structural component or anything so um, yeah so that's it so a lot of painting right now and reassembly looking for a snack all right, we're back. It's Sunday, so another day working on the car. Um, today we're actually making a little progress, so I'm happy about that. Um, I reassembled the AC condenser fan, which is useful. Um, so I got that ready to go on the car. I'm kind of going through all my intercooler 
um, fasteners and brackets and I took this thing off a couple weeks ago so I'm not really certain <laughs> where everything is, what this goes to, etc. I think this might be to the, uh, the stock blow off valve actually. These are definitely for the lower intercooler mounts which attach to those and a bunch of various bolts and nuts. Um, upper intercooler mounts are here. Uh, so there's there's a couple things I want to discuss. <laughs> or I need some help. Um, so here's the intercooler. We are just about dry. Um, I gave it a nice respray. I think it looks serviceable. It's not perfect, but I wanted to hit it with. You know, we took all the paint off it, and then I sat in black the uh, the whole intercooler, so it looks like it did on out the factory. The factory was more of a matte black, but you know, this is close. I think behind the bumper, we're not gonna be able to tell the difference. Took off the Calsonic sticker, so I'm sad about that. No more OEM look, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, it's you know, this will do. I think this will definitely do. But the funny thing that I need to ask a question about is this. So I'm gonna lay this down here, try to get in the sunlight. So, this little guy here got machining markings on it uh, on what looks to be three sides and it's uh, on these two, on this kind of corner edge here it looks like it's got some uh, some fatigue marks some fracture marks so this came off of a larger machined piece I'm not sure what it came off of but I can tell you where I found it which is on the hot side in the hot side of the intercooler so it was uh, when I when I pulled off um, I had some tape over here when I was cleaning it up I pulled that off and then uh, this thing dropped out now I'll, I'll try to show you a picture of what the inside of the fins look like um, this thing couldn't have traveled through the intercooler there is no way that this traveled through the cold side of the intercooler i.e. the intake and popped out over here so whatever its origins are I'm hoping they're from the turbines or um, something in the intake that just got lost or dislodged or something. I'm really not certain. But this is scary because the first thing that I saw when I saw that was a piston ring land. That's what I thought this is. I'm not really certain if it is or not. It's got fully machined like surface here. That's definitely got machining marks. This outer surface too. Um, it's definitely kind of chewed. But you can see there it's got machining marks as well. And then on its lower surface as well, machining marks, and then just fracture both sides. It it's pretty thin. The only ring land that it possibly could be, which is what kind of scares me about it, is uh, maybe the oil ring land. But then again, I'm how did this get into the hot side of the intercooler? I just don't understand how that got in there, came out of there. Like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. There's no crossover pipe. For this to have gone through the breather system into a catch can that got back into the intake and then dropped into the uh, the front side of the intercooler would be, I mean, it would be like a Finding Nemo case. I can't even think about how that would have happened. So I need to figure out what this guy came off of. If anyone could give me some leads, please, uh, I need to know if uh, this engine's fucked or not. It sounds fine when we run it in idle. Um, none of the spark plugs were wet. You know, they're all kind of lean, which is you know, kind of typical for this whole thing. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know what it came from. So cautiously optimistic, it's not a piston. But at the same time, I don't fucking know what they were doing in Scotland. So, so I, I <laughs> they could have fucking torched the engine, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be any of the wiser, unfortunately. So we'll find out. I assume once I put everything back together but yeah very unusual so let me know if you know what that is all right so that went on pretty easy got the AC condenser fan uh, back on bolted up everything's cool the only thing that I did notice as I was reassembling this shit was uh, I have this uh, there's a top rubber mount here on the AC condenser on the left but over here on the right you can see it's missing uh, it wasn't there when I took it off so uh, previous owner just lost a bracket. This happens a lot on Nissans, kind of sucks. You just have to be mindful of who owned your car before. And uh, the person who owned mine before was a psychotic lunatic. So that explains where we're at. Uh, the next thing up is the stock blow off valve setup and uh, the recirculator hose 
which is this, this hard pipe here, this plastic hard pipe. Um, I bought this from the GTR Heritage Center somewhere in England. Pretty cool guys, really helped me out. Um, it's complete, it actually has extra vacuum hose, so I think I'm gonna take it outside right now and degrease it, um, clean it up a little bit. Uh, see what I need, what I don't need. Uh, there's some missing band clamps, but I actually have spare since I have some extra pipes, some duplicate pipes here. So I should be good to go on the, on the clamps and um, vacuum hose. So let me give this guy a good clean and reinstall it, and we're going to go from there. All right, so here's our uh, makeshift workstation for cleaning up the, uh, the stock blow valve. So the blow valve that was on that car was um, a turbo smart. It's called a Megasonic. It has like two giant trumpets on it. I took that off because I don't want to sound like a ricer. I'm going to try not to sound like a ricer. Um, all right, so we got a variety of tools here. I'll take this apart. Eight and 10 mil sockets for the band clamps and also for these bolts. Um, variety of nylon brushes, some extra band clamps, and degreaser and a rag. That's basically all I'm going to do. And we'll see how, how nice I can make this look here. All right, we're about halfway through the cleaning process. Most of this cleaned up pretty well, actually. You know, these, uh, these rubber hoses and stuff, they, just a little degreaser and a nylon brush usually take, bring them back to at least halfway decent condition. I mean, they are old and, and whatnot, 20 years old plus, so, you know, that's, uh, it is what it is, I guess. We'll see how long they last. Now I'm gonna clean the, uh, the main housing. The thing I was looking at the car just a second ago, um, this bracket's on the car. So is this one here, um, so that's good. But I'll probably just unbolt it and bolt this hole in, this, this single unit in. It's three bolts here, it's like one, two, and then there's, I don't know where the fuck the third one is, it's probably over there. Um, <laughs> both of the vacuum lines, or at least a portion of the vacuum line, is, uh, is still there on the car as well. The funny bit about it is uh, Jackass stuck a, an M10 bolt into one of the vacuum lines to plug it because there was only a single vacuum line required for um, for the other blow off valve. So you get this kind of T piece here. So he, this pipe's still on the car uh, and you have this T piece and then he like cut the lines like here basically and he plugged them with a bolt and the other one went to the, the aftermarket blow off valve. So pretty hilarious. Um, nonetheless, I mean, that's the kind of jacked up shit that I keep finding on this car. So we'll put this on correct, um, you know, adding as many these pieces as possible and bring it back to the OEM condition right now. All right, half a bottle of degreaser later. We're all here disassembled, cleaned up, ready to go. So um, I'm gonna start the reassembly process and then we're gonna put it on the car. All right, so here is the install location. Figured I'd show you what was here uh, before we start ripping shit out. So this bracket is duplicated here on my new setup. So I'm going to drop this whole setup here. I think there's two bolts underneath, a bunch of cobwebs, and there's one up there. And it should pop out. Um, this pipe was also the duplicate pipe that I have um, that comes as one unit. See, it's welded to this guy. Uh, I'll probably I'll keep this hose clamp in here. I'm just going to degrease it. I'm taking these two, <laughs> these two lines out and replacing it with the new vacuum lines, which should just attach right there. Um, and got an extra bolt that was used to plug a vacuum line. That's, that's exceptional. Uh, there's a lot of dirt under here, so I might take this time to, uh, degrease and, and just, you know, take a brush and try to rag up in here as much as I can, because I also have, uh, fender liners, which I could put on, um, pretty soon as well. Just kind of want to see the lay of the land, see how bad it is. But yeah, it's just dirt. That's fucking idiot. Just no fender liners. Cool. All right, so that's where we're at. All right, this took way longer than expected. Uh, a lot of finessing to get all these parts in, but we are fully installed. Stock blow off valves back on the car. Next up, diverter pipe. All right, another pull the audience moment. Found a plug, not plugged into anything, right next to the fuse box coming out of the main Looks like the main harness. Um, I don't know where this goes. If any of you guys know where this goes, uh, it's got two wires to it. Uh, please let me know <laughs> because I assume it's somewhere around here, but it's definitely not plugged in. So 
I'm looking for an open plug. I don't seem to find anything at the moment. So I'm not really certain where it is, where it's from. But um, in the process of putting in the blow off valve, I had to remove the, uh, the washer fluid container. So then I cleaned the shit out of that so it looks almost brand new. Really nice. Put that back in. So now we're about to get, get going again. All right. Uh, I skipped a couple steps because I was trying to move quickly. Uh, it's quite a bit of finagling that you have to do to, to put the intercooler on with the uh, diverter valve pipe and and everything and, and put all that together. So a couple of the issues, um, well, I'm missing a band clamp, no big deal. Um, uh, I'll, I'll find one. I took <laughs> I had to take another one from up here as well. So I'm just gonna I'm moving all the missing clamps up the engine. Uh, but basically, the these bottom mounts here, they um, it's got a big rubber mount in there, and uh, this bracket sits on top of the rubber mount, which sits on top of the chassis, and holds the intercooler. But for some reason, what what it's bolted to this diverter valve pipe is kind of cocked to to the left slightly, ever so slightly, but it's enough to kind of pull the whole setup that way. But it's hard mounts on the chassis to the right, making it kind of hard to finesse to get on there. So what I did is I left all the band clamps loose on the whole setup, and I just kind of slowly finessed it into shape, exactly where I wanted it. Um, and now it's now it's here. So freshly painted intercooler core, uh, new <laughs> used but new uh, stock diverter valve or blow off valve, and all the pipe work for that all piped in. Everything's good. In the process of that, I cleaned the uh, the washer fluid tank, so it looks pretty much brand new. So I'm not gonna be one of those guys that buys one of those at $130, or whatever they cost. Uh, so yeah, we're making some progress. I'm happy. Um, next step today is going to be to refit the front bumper and the grill and the headlights and probably the front lip and the fender liner. So let's see how much of that I can get done before we leave. All right, so um, now we got the intercooler in place. Uh, I got the bumper out here, cleaning it up, looking at what's left of the lower tabs of it. Holy shit, there's literally nothing left actually. And just probably the worst paint job I've ever seen on a car, ever. Like this is this makes Mako paint jobs look good. I mean, just ridiculous drip marks, <laughs> um, overspray in random places. They sprayed this, it's supposed to be black. That's supposed to be black. You see it's kind of like the textured plastic. None of that is supposed to be sprayed. Um, just just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I don't even know where to start with here, but but there's one one thing I did want to note. I have to clean that up a little bit. I mean, I gotta make it kind of look okay for the time being. Um, bumper support. So it's got this weird like bracket here, a side support bracket. Makes sense, right? but I come to the left side and no bracket to be found. Like, what the fuck? Uh, it does look like there might have been one fit at one point. I'm not certain. I'm gonna look at some diagrams to see if it exists on both sides. I assume it's symmetrical. I think it would have to be. So, don't know why, why it's not. But we're gonna take a look and, and see if we can't figure it out. So now, Decided I was going to install the front lip. Uh, I don't have all the anchor nuts required why well, I thought I did, but they're all rusted to shit. So I took those off and I just got a bunch of nuts that I'll put on with the uh, the fasteners since I bought all the, the bottom fasteners. So, all right, so let me install this. So a bit more fast forwarding. Attached the front lip. Uh, I didn't have any of those anchor nuts, but I found a bunch of nuts that worked. So I uh, got the front lip fully installed. Uh, then I installed the bumper with all the new fasteners that I had. Uh, everything lines up really nice on this side. For some reason, it's sagging a little bit here in the front on this side. I'm not really certain why. It, it's not going on very easy, so I might take it off and and redo it, but I wanted to get a little photo out before before I head out because uh, Ross, the shop owner, is on going on holiday soon. So um, 
I installed the grill on the front bumper and, and just the GTR emblem and whew, sexy.